the sermon. Um, and as you're about to find out, um, I've seen and hearing that I get real excited when it comes to God's Word. God's Word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So I have no doubt in my mind that's God's promise that you'll be blessed by hearing God's Word. So uh, sit back, get comfortable, uh, whatever you need to do, enjoy the sermon. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Make sure mine work too. Y'all give him another hand, please. Hey, save me. I got the wrong one. Oh, okay. I think that's all. Okay. I need the shorter one. I'll switch it up. <laughs> Lord already switching it up. Guys, before we jump off in prayer, me and uh, Pastor Wayne wanted to uh, convey something to everybody. Uh, we just want to thank everybody. Um, we know in Cowboy Church, uh, one of the things that we, that we love to see is the Scriptures come alive. I'm not saying the other churches doesn't do it, but um, one of the Scriptures that comes to mind is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom to learn. There's freedom to worship. There's freedom to praise. And there's freedom also not just to grow as brothers and sisters in Christ, but to grow as pastors and as preachers and evangelists. We thank you all for being patient with us while we walk through some changes in our lives too and also learning how to be good shepherds and how to keep going to the Lord. So for that, we wanted to thank you all for that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And I know for me, I want to thank you all for, for teaching me as much as, as I probably or more than I've been able to teach y'all. So thank y'all for that. Also, um, keep Pastor Dwayne in your prayers. Uh, after today, he leaves for two Sundays in a row. Tell me if I get any of this wrong. And um, he's preaching at three other churches. One Sunday, he'll be preaching two different churches and another Sunday, another cowboy church. Is that right? Yes, sir. And also, lay Pastor uh, Daniel right now, he's preaching at Bold Cross. Uh, Cowboy Church over there in Weston, so um, keep him in your prayers as well. Um, uh, while Mary James and, and the band was back there, or up here singing and praising the Lord, I, I believe what the Bible says. It says that I occupy the praises of my people, enter His presence with thanksgiving. So sometimes during praise and worship, you can have scriptural revelation, and the Lord can just start doing a dialogue with you in, in your mind, or He can start showing you something. And I, I believe he started showing me something that I want everybody to visualize. If you can close your eyes real quick. We're going to open up in prayer. And if you could bow your head and close your eyes. And uh, imagine yourself right now standing beside a fire. It's a small fire, but it is a fire. And then the Lord started showing me, if you want this fire to burn hotter and brighter in your life, then you need to throw the logs on there, the logs I tell you to throw on there. And what are these logs? Individually as Christians, if you want the Lord to, to be brighter and stronger in your walk, then we have to start throwing some logs on the fire. One of those logs is lust. Are you willing to give lust over to Him? One of those is um, fear. A log of fear. You need to throw that on there as well. Another big log would be self-righteousness that, you know, I, I've always been gifted in this certain area and I can do it. And yeah, Lord, if you want to help me, that's good. But if not, I got it. That is a huge log. Throw that log in the fire. Because apart from Him, we can do nothing. Here's a log that most people don't realize, but it's a log of omission and contentment. That you don't get up. You don't do anything. Our Lord is not a lazy king. He gets up and so will His children. Our king does things and so will His children. So throw that log on there as well. Over time, you will begin to see that, you know what, everything that's of you, everything that's of this world, we need to throw it into the fire. And as this fire gets more and more, it will catch everybody's attention and it will draw a crowd to the fire and they'll say, man, how'd you make such a big fire? You say, that's not my fire. For that's my king. And he'll, he'll gather everybody around to teach everyone about himself. See, it is truly all about Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. It's about Jesus today. And it's always going to be about Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name that we are willing to throw these logs on the fire this morning. 
We're willing to admit that we can't do anything without Him, but with Him we can do all things. I pray that we don't come to church just just ready to hear another just a word or a praise and worship. I pray that we ask the Lord to inspire us. So Father God, we ask Your Holy Spirit to dwell mightily in here today. We ask that You be with the intercessors. We ask that You be with the lost, Lord. Prick their hearts so they may call out to You today. Lord, we love You and we do not take You for granted. It's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Um, today is the final sermon of a three-sermon series that me and Pastor Dwayne felt led to do. The first one was called My Brother. The second one was called My Father. And then today is called My Son. So it, me and Pastor Wayne felt led to read and go over and preach and teach and, and say exactly what the Lord asked us to. Amen? Amen? Are you ready to receive God's Word? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. When we came about this, and we, today is about Jesus. Amen. Each and every day should be about Jesus. But today we, we're going to teach about what the Lord's to, led to our, on our, each one of our hearts. I'll be in uh, Matthew 5, verse 1. If you have your Bibles, if you want to go ahead and open up to that. Uh, it's the Beatitudes. It's the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Um, it's where you know, Jesus is gathered up. There's a multitude of people following Him. He's gone through Galilee, and, and He goes up and He takes the disciples up on the Mount. To, uh, to give them a, a, a mini lesson on their own, to, to teach them a little deeper than, uh, than what he did with the multitudes. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, it says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now in this lesson, he taught that it's blessed to be all these different things. Now in the, in the world standard, the world's view, it seems to be a huge contradiction. Because, you know, who, who could consider it to be blessed and poor in spirit? Who is blessed or more? When we lose a loved one, do we think of ourselves as being blessed? You know, we've lost somebody that's dear to us, but Jesus tells us that we're blessed when all these things happen. And it's a big contradiction to the world. If you really want to live for Christ, to give when others take, love when others hate, and help when others abuse. Amen. It's a big, big difference in what the world tells us nowadays. The world tells us to go out and take what we can. Get what's yours. And that's the opposite of what the Bible teaches. The, Bible, the world now is teaching us that, that the good things are evil and evil things are good. And that if you love the things that are good, what the Bible says is good, that they're telling us now that that is hate. Mm. The abused in today's world has gotten immensely huge. The people that are being physically abused, mentally abused, especially the children. As y'all know, you know, it's been laid on our hearts big time for, the, for these the children, for the foster care and stuff. And, and there's a huge gap out there that we need to stand in for these children that are being abused. And that to help those families get back on track and do the things that they're called to do by God. We're going to start through here at verse 3 where it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit and kind of work down through each one of these. It says, Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What is to be poor in spirit? You know, I, I do some research on that and, and look up different things. And, you know, to be poor in spirit sounds pretty bad. But really, it's a really good thing. Because if we're poor in spirit, we recognize our spiritual poverty. We recognize that, that we're sinners. We realize that we need a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. Amen. It's to be, to not be self-righteous. 
we go through the, the, each day and we, we tend to build ourselves up bigger than what we should be. We, we tend to, to put ourselves a lot higher than we need to be and we need to, to remain humble. Which goes into uh, the blessed are those who mourn. I talked about losing a loved one. The blessed are those who mourn seemed to be my kind of go-to scripture when I've asked to do funerals. Because we've, people at a funeral, they're mourning. They're, they're hurting, their hearts are broke, and they're reaching out and they're looking for some, for some comfort. And it says right there, Blessed are those who are mourned, for they shall be comforted by the great comforter, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. He'll come and He'll give them the comfort that they need and the comfort that they desire as the time goes on. Well, blessed are those who mourn. When we lose a loved one, it doesn't seem to be a very blessed time. It doesn't seem to be a joyful time. But if we know that they are followers of Jesus Christ, it should be a time of, of celebration. Amen. It should be a time of, of joyous remembrance of their life, the things that they did and the things that they meant to us. And that should bless us by being able to recall things that may have been forgotten over the years, but we don't remember until they, they pass. And we all will be comforted in those, those thoughts and those memories. Blessed are the meek. If you look up the word meek in the dictionary now, the world's view on being meek is said to be submissive, obedient, or tame. The world's view on that is weakness. The Bible's view on that, to me, is strength and humility. To be humble, to humble yourself, to be able to be strong enough and, and brave enough to... Submit yourself to some to your brother or sister to submit yourself to to be obedient to the word To be obedient to Jesus Christ to be obedient to the Holy Spirit to do what you're called to do and what you're asked to do And that's a struggle in today's society because the world tells us that we're supposed to be strong Once again to get what's ours take what what's owed to us And the Bible tells us to give If it's owed to you give it away And it'll be given back Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Mm -hmm. When you become a Christian and you, you give your life over to Christ and you start to, to learn and you start to grow, a lot of times, a lot of us will get a, a big hunger and thirst. But as we start to, to mature a little bit, sometimes we'll, we'll, go, we'll, get, we'll start to get self-righteous. We'll feel that we're getting full. We don't need to, to, we're not as hungry as we used to be because the world will start pulling us away. And I'll tell you this little story. Uh, when I was in high school, I used to run cross country. You couldn't tell it now, but <laughs> I used to run long distances, and it was I enjoyed it. Um, but one one me one cross country me one day we got back to the school, and one of my teammates lived down the road from me, so he was taking me home, and I had to run into the school to get something out of my locker. Well, when I came back out, and the door shut behind me, of course it was locked, and there wasn't nobody around. Everybody was gone. I lived about eight miles or nine miles from the high school. And where I went to school, it was nothing but cornfields and soybean fields in the summertime. Um, it, was, it was barren. There was a house every half a mile or mile or so. But anyway, when I, we'd done been, the race had been over. We ran three miles. I exerted all my energy during that race. And we got back, and I had no way home. Couldn't get in to use the phone. There were no cell phones back then. Um, so I, I just took off and I walked. Well, on that walk, the thirst and the hunger, I'd been all day, hadn't eaten all morning for, because of the race. Well, I was on the way home. It, it took me about four hours to walk it because I kept having to stop and rest because mm. I was just physically drained. I was thirsty. I was hungry. And, you know, I just wanted to walk up to a stranger's house and knock on the door and ask them to drive me home. Mm. Uh, that's the way we can get in our spiritual walk. Yes. We can go out and we can be running the race and we can, we can be doing what we're being told to do, but we, if we don't fill ourselves up, if we don't get the meat of the Word, be filled with the Holy Spirit and the everlasting water of life, Jesus Christ, then we'll, we'll get drained. We get physically weak, mentally weak, and we just we want to give up and we want to quit. So I, I ask and I beg, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. If you hunger and thirst for those things and you continue to seek those things, that's when you continue to be filled. And when you're filled, you get filled to the top. Then you start overflowing. When you're overflowing, 
That's when you can pour out on others. Amen. That's when you can be the blessing to your brothers and sisters in Christ. You can be a blessing to non-believers Amen. to be able to witness, to be able to show your light through them or through you to them to be able to point them to Christ. It, it's a hard and it's a struggle sometimes to witness to non-believers. It's real easy to hang out with a bunch of, of brothers and sisters and be a Christian. But it's really hard sometimes to be a Christian around a bunch of non-believers. And that's the true test that we all have to follow. Blessed are those who are merciful. If you want to get mercy, you feel beat down, you feel the world weighing down on your shoulders, you feel kind of beat up and struggling, and you feel hungry and thirsty, and you feel that the world's just against you, and you, if you want to get mercy, show mercy. If you want to get some love, show some love. If you... Galatians uh, 6 2 says that you bear one another's burdens. If you are feeling burdened and heavy, go to a brother or sister and, and help them carry their burdens. Because you know what's going to happen is they're going to help you carry yours. They're going to lift you up as you lift them up. As you show them mercy and love through the things that they're going through, they're going to turn right back around and show that mercy and love to you. So blessed are those who are merciful, before they shall obtain the mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. To be pure in heart, what is that? To be pure in heart is to be Christ-like. To put the things that Jason talked about, those logs, to put the, the lust and the, the fear and stuff, put those logs on that fire is to be pure of heart. Get rid of them. Get them out of your heart because the, the easiest way to be, to be beat down and, and dragged down this world nowadays is to carry those things. Mm -hmm. To carry them in your heart. When you can give them up and, and, and remain pure in heart and be Christ-like, is when you'll be the most blessed. And you for you shall see, it says, for you shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. You know, when I first started reading that, peacemakers, it made me believe whoever can, you know, can calm the, the storm around us, whoever can, you know, break up a fight. You know, you see two brothers, sisters bickering, two friends bickering and fighting. You know, to me, that first meant, you know, I got to go, I got to make peace. You got to cure it all. That's what as husbands, a lot of times, that's what we want to do. When our wives come to us with a problem, we want to, we want to bring peace to it. We want to fix it. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what we feel that we need to do. But to be a peacemaker is to gain the peace of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. to gain the peace of God in our lives so we can help bring that peace to others. In one of the notes, it said this, it was to re receive peace with God is to acknowledge our own wretchedness, wretchedness through repentance and faith. And where then we're adopted into God's family, then we can gain the peace of God by doing the Father's business, by spreading the full message of the gospel. That's what we're called to do. You want to gain God's peace? Preach His gospel. Amen. Talk to people about Christ. Tell them what He's done in your life. You don't have to give a big sermon. You don't have to give a big message. All you got to do is tell people around you what God has done in your life, how He's worked and, and moved in, in your spirit and the things that He's done for you to be able to show them that it's not, it's not a big fancy sermon. It's not big $50 words that'll, that'll save people. It's your testimonies, your life, the way you live will help more people to Christ than, than any sermon that we can all preach. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And this part I really love. It says, Blessed are you when, when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. This world nowadays, like I said a minute ago, evil has become good and good has become evil. The things that, that were taught, like I said before a couple months ago in a sermon, what is tolerated now will become accepted later. And it just, it rolls. The good news is, by the things getting as bad as they're getting today's world, it means Jesus is coming back. Amen. He's coming back sooner than later. But when it says right here, it says, and you say, and, and they say all kinds of evil things against you falsely for my name's sake. As, as, as Christians and being, as human beings, a lot of times we'll start to claim when things are going wrong in our lives, well, I'm being persecuted because I'm a Christian. I'm being this because I'm a Christian. When a lot of times, it's, it's our own fault. Sometimes we'll bring things on ourselves when things start coming against us. But it's considered to be righteousness when people could, could falsely accuse you for His name's sake. When they look at you and they accuse you for the things that you're doing for Him is when they come against you. It says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, 
for great is your reward in heaven. For they so persecuted the prophets who were before you. They persecuted the prophets. They persecuted Jesus. And if you become Christ-like and you're a follower of Jesus Christ, they will persecute you. They'll come against us. They'll, they'll try to show us that, that the way we're doing is wrong. We're being intolerant. We're being hateful when we're just trying to be a good steward with what the Lord has given us, with what this Bible tells us, and to be able to go out and be a light to others. So stay strong. Stay strong in the Word. Continue to lift up each other. Go to your brothers and sisters. When you see that they're down, and it's easy to know when somebody's being beat down in the world. And see, just look at them. Look at their face. Look them in the eyes, and you'll be able to tell when things are going wrong in people's lives. No matter what's going on in yours, go to that person. Lift them up. Bear their burdens. And continue to show the love of Christ to them. And it's a domino effect. It'll just ripple through this church and through this community, through North Texas, through the state, and through the country. We've got to show Jesus Christ's love to one another. Because without that, we're doing all this for nothing. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Um, the thing I love, one of the things I love about the Lord is, obviously, as I said earlier, about the freedom the Lord gives you. And um, one of those is the freedom, obviously, to be honest. Amen. Um, and... Uh, if, if you're not convinced that you need Jesus in your life, I pray He convinces you, but I pray that you just take heed to what the Scriptures are saying and not have to go through a valley to be convinced of that. Um, back in the day, I'd be, I wouldn't want to get up here. I wouldn't want to get in front of this many people. Um, but if I had to... I tried to buck down and to be strong and just get up there and do it anyway. And as I'm sitting back there um, by a, a good sister, my dear sister in Christ, um, I'm, I'm listening to Mary James um, sing and the band play. And, and I'm sitting there literally thinking, Lord, I don't want to get up there. I just want her to keep singing. And I just wanted this, the whole service, to be a praise and worship service. And I, and I started getting fearful. I started getting scared. And I believe that needs to be said. Because if you think that everything's going to be working just perfect when the Lord wants you to get up and do something, you're, you've, you're in error. Because sometimes, just as she's saying, that He's going to take that weakness and turn it for His glory. Amen? Amen. So... And for the longest time when I was in church, I was going, well, I just don't have it all together yet. And I, I just, there's some still stuff that i got to fix in my life before I even start coming consistently because I don't want to be labeled as a hypocrite. And, you know, and, and I'm sorry, i got a high school diploma. I don't have no fancy vocabulary words. And Lord, I'm not a pretty talker. And, and I would sit there and literally argue with the Lord all day long. And I knew He wanted me to get up anyway because He's going to take that stuff and He's going to throw it in the trash and He's going to speak through you. Amen? Amen. So Amen. I think the church needs to understand, we've got to understand, it isn't you that does it. That's it true. must be Christ through you that does it. Amen? Amen. And, and, and to be honest, it's a good thing if you get up here scared or if you do something or something, the Lord prompts you to do something at Corby's or at Walmart or to a, fr uh, a friend or a family member. Um, because in that very moment you say, Lord, give me courage. Give me Your words. Amen? And when you do that, he, he will change things. I was reading again in the Gospels last night. Um, me and my wife are sitting at, at our bar right next to our kitchen, and, and, we're, and I'm just reading through... Um, I'll be in Mark chapter 4 today. And I was just reading the first three or four chapters of Mark, and I'm just sitting there, and I, and I was noticing that the pattern with Jesus. See, when Jesus showed up, you either wanted to kill Him or cling to Him. Amen? You either wanted to kill him and shut him up, or you wanted to cling to him and follow him and chase him. So, and I was sitting there thinking, I was like, man, there's no way people can say, I know Jesus and not be changed. Amen. Everywhere Jesus went, he changed people, he changed you. And then again, when we're back there doing praise and worship, I was sitting there thinking and imagining, I was like, the Lord's like a, a locomotive, he's like a full blown train. And he's coming through. And ain't nobody going to stop him. 
You can either stand in front of him and get run over, or you can stand off on the side and just wave as the train goes by, or you can get on and be part of that powerful train. Amen. Because when you're riding with him, things change every time. And, and, I, and, and sometimes just as Pastor Dwayne is talking, we get down and we get up, we have valleys, we have mountaintops, we have all these things. And I, I just, we, we had a, a, a pastor gathering the, this past week, Thursday, right back there where Mr. Damon is back there sitting. And I'm sitting there and the, and the pastor comes up to me. And let me say this, guys, I pray that your entire education on the Bible and Christianity is not just with this church. Amen. I pray that you are hungry and thirsty and grabbing for sermons as long as they're straight from the Word of God. Amen? And as I was sitting there talking, he, they gathered around me to pray over me. We were taking turns praying over each other. And guys, no, understand this. You can pray for somebody, you can pray with somebody, or you can pray over somebody. And if you've never been prayed over, I'm telling you, that's a difference. Amen. And these pastors gathered around me and they're going to pray over me. He says, Jason, what do you want? If the Lord just came down right now and gave you anything you want, what would you ask? I said, I, I pray in Jesus' name that you give a ministry that is effective. That every time we preach, it does something. Every time we sing and praise the Lord, it does something. Every time we get up and represent a team, it does something. Every time we evangelize, it does something. Every time you go to another country, you do something. I don't want it ever for people to be leaving. And don't get me wrong, this is not a show. But I don't want anybody to ever leave these doors and go, meh, yeah, got some popcorn, yeah, it's all right. I want people, I want the Holy Spirit to grab a hold of you because if He grabs a hold of you, your life's going to change whether you like it or not. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Last service, I, I read uh, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41 first. I'm not going to do that. We're going to start at verse 21. This is 20 scriptures, 20 verses that we're going to read today. And I was felt led to come here. And this is Jesus talking red letter, obviously. He's teaching. Uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 21. It says, light under a basket. Verse 21, it says, also he said to them, is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Guys, now more than ever. Are we listening? Now more than ever. No more secret service Christians. Amen. No more letting people push you in the back into the corner. I'm not saying be a bully and fight back that way. I'm not saying fight back with these. I'm not saying fight back with an attitude out of your mouth. I'm not saying anything. I'm saying that if somebody approaches you and you feel the pushing of somebody to get you to silence your mouth or to stop believing in what you believe, then you go to the restroom, you go out to your truck or car, you, the next time you're at your home, you find a quiet spot at a park, you hit your knees, and you ask the Lord to do this. Lord, every time they try to quench my fire that you gave me, may it just blaze even more and more and more. Amen. The Bible said that His bride, when He, when he comes back, His bride is ready for her. Amen? He, he, that it's no longer... Guys, please don't get me wrong... It is okay to get excited for the Lord. Amen. I mean, how many times have we gotten excited for all kinds of things in our lives? I mean, there's a time that I'd have took my shirt off and painted a big old letter and went and, and cheered for some college football team. There's a time that I'd have went to the Bronco Bowl in Dallas and they would have had some octagon fighting, some throwdown, and I'd be up there saying, Get in! <laughs> and then we'd come to church and we're like, Shh. I don't know if, if there's anything to be excited about. It is because of King Jesus. Amen. It's because He saved us. Amen? Praise the Lord. Don't let this world convince you. The Lord is saying, look, I, I, I put my light in you. I didn't put my light in you so you can put it under your bed. Or you can cover it up with a basket. And it doesn't mean when the next time you're at Brookshire's, you go up to everybody in the produce section and say, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you know? It doesn't mean that. But you can say a kind word. The Bible says do good to all. Everybody say all. Oh. Do good to all, especially to the household of faith. We can encourage people. We can, we can brighten their day up. Amen. And when they sit there and go, wow, where would you come from? You go, you want to come to church? Amen. 
Amen. It's something as simple as that. So the Lord's saying, hey, I gave this light to you. Don't be trying to hide it. Amen? And then He also says this, For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. If you're living and breathing today, we've all at least had, many of us still have, secrets. Guys, they will eventually come to the light. It's best that we confess it to the light now. Amen. Because there is a scripture in the Bible that yanked a knot in me. How many of you know we can all put on a church face? We can all come in here and we can learn how to be professional Christians. Let me tell you what that means. Our life's a wreck. We come in here as soon as we shut the door of our truck. We walk in here we're like, hey, good morning. God bless you. Hey. <laughs> and your whole life's a wreck. And when you leave, you get back to the same old fighting, the same old arguing, the same old craziness. And this one scripture straightened me up. It said, your sin will find you out. What does that mean? You keep trying to hold a secret, eventually the Lord will show grace, grace, grace. He'll give you time. And if you don't, it's exposed. The Bible says about that woman Jezebel in Revelation. It said, I gave her time to repent. But she did not. So I, y'all listen to this. This scripture is God saying, I, I threw her in a sick bed. Did you ever think that the Lord would throw people in a sick bed? He will, but not before He shows grace and mercy trying to get you to just reveal that secret to Him. And guess what? There's no secrets to the Lord. He knows it anyway, so all you have to do is confess it. That's right. You ever notice that in the garden He says, What did you do? Why would God, who knows all things, ask Him to say that? I asked him that question. What did you do? He knows it, so why do he ask? Because he wants you to confess it to him. There is power in the kingdom of heaven by confessing something to the Lord. Something he already knows. Amen? Amen. Verse 24, Then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. This is talking about spiritual knowledge, spiritual revelation. Listen to what he says. He said, take heed to what you hear. Okay, right now we're all listening to the Scriptures. We're all listening to the Word of God. There's an instruction. He's asking us to do something. He said, take heed to what you hear. With the same measure you hear? No. He said, with the same measure you use. It will be given back to you. What does that mean, Jesus? This is what that means. That means if you want to display or show or ask the Lord for a little bit of faith, if you want to take a little bit of step, guess what? You're going to experience a little bit of Jesus. Guys, if you look up the word faith, it's in proportion to how much you do, how much you trust. Amen? Amen. When I was 18 years old, I went to Scott Up Dallas for my birthday, jump out of an airplane. You can be an expert at parachutes. You can be an expert at skydiving. You can be experts in the Cessna and, and how to fly an airplane. But there comes a point you're going to have to jump. Amen? All the knowledge, all the book smarts, all this stuff is eventually... All the teaching will eventually stop and the Lord's going to say, you know what? Jump. Either you're going to trust me or you're not. He says, with the same measure you use, it will be given back unto you. Amen? Amen. I mean, and I, I believe that needs to be said is because some people, they, they take... And this is not making fun of nobody because we all, we all got fears. Amen? Amen? Okay. But if you trust the Lord this much, that's how much you'll receive from Him. But if you jump off this stage and say, bring it, guess what? He's going to bring it. Amen. Amen? This is one reason why Dwayne and myself and other lay pastors and teachers get excited about the Lord is because we want you so much to experience with the love of Christ and having a true relationship with Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. So if you have... Here's some practical application. If you've been given something by the Lord, He gave you a scriptural revelation, go tell somebody about it. Don't keep it to yourself. He says, what I whisper to you in the room, shout on the rooftops. Amen? Did not Jesus say that? So if He, if he gives you something, if He gives you a word, if He gives you a word of knowledge, if He gives you an encouragement, 
If He gives you a blessing, share it with somebody. Amen. And guess what? It's going to keep on coming. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, verse 26, And He said, The kingdom of God is God as, as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. He Himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately He puts the sit in the sickle because the harvest has come. And so often we hear these words and we're like, man, what does all that mean? But know that it's as if a man's going around spreading seed. And at first it doesn't seem like much. And this, after reading the Scripture, it made me pray different. I believe that when we study the Word of God and we hear sermons and we hear just different things uh, within the church, it should change your prayer life or it should add to and make it richer. Amen? There's many times I've been praying on a matter, praying on a matter, praying on a matter, praying, and I don't see nothing. I'm like, man, what, why, why this happening? And then I heard somebody pray this prayer who would go in accordance and, and agree with this Scripture. I said, Lord, can I see at least a little bit of that seed where it went? Can I see a little bit of manifestation of what's happening? And the Lord shows up and shows me that He's still working. What does that mean? Right here He says, For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. So there's many people who would be praying on something, praying on something, praying on something, praying on something. They see nothing. Next time you, you get discouraged and you start feeling that, say, Lord, can I see the blade? Can I see the blade from that seed? Can I see where, what phase it's in? You don't know that He'll let you see that. Why? Because it will encourage you to continue doing what, what you've been called to do, is plant those seeds. It could be a family member. I mean, just as uh, uh, Mary James started talking about, sometimes with family, it's so hurtful. But you can be praying and praying and say, Lord, can I see some type of blade or manifestation that our prayers are being answered or heard? And the next time we hear a family member go, will you all pray for me? Let me tell you something. Two years ago, you mentioned the P word and they're fighting. They're, it's moving in their lives. And the Lord's encouraging us right here. He said, look, seed time harvest. Seed time harvest. One plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. Um, I can't help but I said this story in the first service and it makes me laugh every time I think about it. But Maylee was helping Grandpa. My five-year-old girl was helping Grandpa in the garden and um, they were planting seeds for potatoes. And after he planted seeds for the potatoes, um, uh, he turned around. Maylee was sitting there like this, staring at the ground. <laughs> he said, he said Maylee, what are you doing? He said, well, when they come up, how many of us we do that with a prayer? We'll pray and be like, I told you it don't work. There's, there's got to be some faith involved, amen? amen. we got to say, you know what? I don't have to worry about it anymore. You know what? I'm just going to trust God. Amen? I'm just going to trust God with it. If you believe that, say amen. 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 May we not have the melee technique. Amen. <laughs> I love my girl. Verse 30. Then he said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds on the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may rest or may, may nest under its shade. There are so many times that you can say a prayer, receive a prayer, and at that very moment, it seems very insignificant. It seems very small. Like in the big scheme of things, it's just so small, it means nothing. But if you put that seed to the Lord, if you give it time, it will eventually be the, the biggest tree in the garden. So much so. It's, listen to what the Scripture says. I love this. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs. Don't ever think that your prayers are insignificant, those in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. And shoots out large branches. How many of you know that there comes a point in time that the kingdom of heaven, it's no longer playing around. It's about to start shooting some fruits out. And if anybody's been walking with the Lord for a while, you know eventually it seems like nothing, seems like nothing, seems like nothing. And just when you're about to lose all hope, boom! There it goes. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. Lord, 
I can't help but imagine the Lord will take you from the kitty table at Thanksgiving, scared to death to say grace, to have you preaching the word to thousands of people. Amen. If you don't think He won't do that, look right here. <laughs> I'm telling you, there was a time when we'd go to my papa's house and I'd be scared. If I could just get past the grace part, I'm fine. I didn't want nobody to call or me to pray, nothing. I wanted to go to my kitty table and eat my fried chicken and mashed potatoes. Amen? Amen. God can change your life forever. Forever. And He wants to. Don't ever think your prayers are insignificant. As soon as you gave it to the Lord, it planted. Amen? Amen. Verse 33. There's many times, guys, I, I, I want to encourage people when you read the Bible that never think that there's an insignificant Scripture within the Bible. Because all the Scriptures, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all the Scriptures are inspired by the Word of God. If you believe that, say Amen. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Don't fall asleep. Church ain't over yet. Amen? Amen. Glory. You can get Dairy Queen in a minute, but we're still going to preach for just a few more minutes. Amen? Was that wrong? No. You're good. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, glory. If you love the Lord, say glory. Glory. Amen. Verse 33. You might think it's a transitional Scripture from one story to another story. It's not. There's nothing insignificant. Verse 33. It says, And with many such parables... He spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. What does that mean? He's going to talk to you in a way that you'll understand it. Mm -hmm. So if you ever walk away from a sermon, especially one of ours, and you're like, I don't know what he was saying, immediately pray and say, Lord, cause him to preach your word since it's yours, your word that we understand it. Make it simple for us to understand. Amen. Jesus did it, and he's our example. Verse 34, But without a parable, He did not speak to them. And when they were alone, everybody say alone. Alone. And when they were alone, He explained all things to His disciples. Guys, if you're not having alone time with the Lord, you need to. Because that's when revelation and, and your relationship gets more and more in tune with Him. I, I, I looked up last night on sunrisesunset.com or something. It says when the sun comes up, when the sun goes down. The sun came up this morning at 6, 16 a.m. And the Bible says that the Lord often got up before sunrise and prayed to the Father. Guys, you want to, you want to see a difference? If you're a Christian in here, you, you try this out and see if the Lord won't bless you. Get up before the sun comes up. And just have some quiet time with Him that week. I bet you, no, I don't have to bet you. The Lord, the Word will promise you, you will have a different week that week. You know why? Because you gave your first fruits to the Lord. You say, you know what, Lord, before the sun comes up, I'm going to talk to the sun. Amen? Amen? So that when the sun comes up, the sun can be powerful through me. Amen? Amen. I'm... We can scream and holler and throw this thing off the stage and, and we can have... PowerPoint presentation. We can invite Alan Jackson up here to, to do some gospel songs, but until you are willing to do what the Bible says, you will see no change. That's right. You have to be a doer of the Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Now verse 35. Last six Scriptures. Subtitle on the Bible says, Wind and the wave obey Jesus. It says, On the same day when evening had come, He said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Guys, y'all look up here real quick. There's a time that the Lord will teach. There's a time the Lord will preach. And there's a time He will stop teaching and stop preaching. And He will say, let's go. Amen? Amen. There's a time that you, you can hear and receive the Word. Take heed to the Word and let it plant in your heart. And then when you walk out them doors, there might be a time you get, you get a chance to demonstrate your faith in Him. Amen? Amen. That's the hard part sometimes and the confusing part sometimes. Christians, they, we feel like it should be this way and it's not. It's a different way. Amen? So on the same day, He said, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took Him along in the boat as He was, and other little boats were also with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. Just as you can see, guys, just as you can see a storm approaching, just as you can see, the rain start, lightning strike, 
thunder gets louder, and then you can be right dead in the middle of the red part or the purple part on the radar, on the Doppler. You can see that spiritually too. You ask the Lord to show you. you and it'll, it'll happen something like this. You'll be at work, and you'll go, something ain't right. I don't know how to explain it. Just something ain't right. And then over time, something else is added to it. See how there's a progression and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. How many know that you can be in situations where it feels like you're about to sink? Amen? But he was in the stern asleep on the pillow. <laughs> you ain't going to make our Lord nervous. There's not one time you're going to come to the king. he go, wait a minute. I ain't never dealt with that one. Let me go back to my God library and figure that one out. Never once will you do that. Never once will you bring something to him and you scare him. He's always calm because he's God. He's in full control. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we won't go to him because we don't want to bother him or we see him like an earthly father. You're never going to bother him. You're never going to, you're going to, you're going to interrupt him because he's busy in Iraq right now. He's not going to go, wait a minute, let me finish talking to these Iraqis over here. You're never going to do that because when you come to him, he is all powerful and he can handle it. Amen. Right. Amen. Don't say, well, there's all these people. This is a real common one, especially in the church in the South. Well, all these people got problems. You know, the last thing the Lord wants to do is worry about my problems. Foolishness. Do you know why? Jesus Himself in the garden prayed for Himself first. Now, if He gave the perfect example, it's okay to pray for yourself. Matter of fact, if you don't, you're hurting yourself. You're selling yourself short. If you believe the Lord loves you, raise your hand. Okay, how many of us, if, if we know that somebody loves us, don't you know they love to help you? Amen? Amen. Amen. Then he rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey Him? First thing He asked them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And if you studied that phrase, it means how is it that your faith is undeveloped? It's not coming to maturity. Guys, I don't think it's coincidence that over here, He's teaching us about faith. And the very next thing, He gave them an opportunity to trust in Him. Amen? Amen. Church is no good if you don't use it once you leave these doors. That's right. It does absolutely no good. It's just another show. It's just another gimmick. It's just another distraction. It's just another thing unless you're willing to step out and trust in God. Amen. And I love this. It seems insignificant, but it's not. Mary James, can y'all come up, please? It's, it, it seems insignificant, but it's not. It said, let us cross over to the other side. See, if we paid attention to what He said in the beginning, He already said, we're going to make it all the way across this thing. He already said, we're going to the other side. And if the disciples really truly understand what He just said, then they wouldn't have been fearful in the storm. They would have thought something to this manner. They would have said, you know what? This is a bad storm. It looks like we're about to sink. It looks like everything's about to come to an end. It's, it's, it's looking like we're about to die. But you know what? Our Lord said, we're going to the other side. So... He's either going to make us give us fish gills and we're going to walk on the bottom or He's going to cause this, the storm to stop or He's going to give us a bigger boat. He's going to do something to cause us to get to the other side. Why? Because God said earlier, we're going to the other side. That's right. What is a scripture that we can use today in White Wright, Texas? Philippians chapter 1, it says this, If I, Jesus, He's saying this, If I, Jesus, start a good work in you, it will be Him who brings it unto the day of Jesus Christ, unto the day of completion. So if you're a saved, born-again Christian here today, guess what? This promise you can rest in is that we don't get to heaven by our good deeds. We don't get to heaven. If you're saved and by faith and faith alone, it is not your, now your works that get you all the way to heaven. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, if I'm the one who saves you, I'm going to be the one that brings you all the way to glory. So it doesn't matter what this world says. It doesn't matter what CNN says. It doesn't matter what the government says. It doesn't matter what the cosmopolitan silly magazine says. God said, I'm going to bring you all the way to the end. 
And if He's the one that's going to do that, we can trust in Him. We can rest in that hope. Amen? Amen. 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 Can you stand, please? As they play, I'm going to close in prayer. Guys, y'all look up here real quick. You cannot tell me with a clear conscience the Holy Spirit hadn't spoken to some of y'all today. Amen. You would be lying in church. <laughs> so this is what I'm asking. This is what me and Pastor Dwayne are asking you. He told you to do something. Don't try to go do it by yourself. Ask Him for His courage, His strength, and His words. And then you step out on faith and you go do it. Amen. If it's to pray for somebody, you pray for them. If you've been denying the Lord all your life and He's telling you, trust in Me, let Me save you, then you call out Him today and be saved. Right. This is not a show. We're dealing with life and death. People dying and burning in hell every day. Every day over something that was free. It cost Him everything free to us. All you have to do is ask. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank You for today. I thank You, Lord, for Pastor Dwayne. I thank You for our lay pastors and our elders. Thank You for our team leaders. I thank You for the women of the church. I thank You for the strong brothers and the father figures and the children. We thank You for Jesus. We thank You for Your Holy Spirit. We thank You for Your Word that sets us all straight. I thank You for no shows and no gimmicks. You're a real God, a real Savior, a real King. Lord, I pray that people, if they're lost in here today, I pray they call out to You, Lord. Lord, I pray they call out to You. Lord, if people have been hurt, may they trust in You anyway. Lord, You know all their needs. Lord, we pray for every beaten heart here today. It doesn't matter if they're three weeks old or 98 years old. You love them all. You love them all. Lord, as they sing, I pray that the Holy Spirit grabs a hold of their heart. You said no man come to the Father unless the Spirit draw him. Lord, this all belongs to You. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey guys, thanks again for stopping by the sermon section. I hope you enjoyed the sermon. I just want you to know you don't have to be in church for the Lord to bless you. He will bless you right where you're sitting or standing right now. And remember that the time of salvation is right now. So if you want to call out to the Lord, you call out to the Lord right now by yourself, wherever you're at, whenever you're doing. Just remember that God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's for those in Christ Jesus. So I hope you're blessed. I hope you come back to see us. In Jesus' name, may the Lord.